Hi, today I'm going to talk to you about the Tresena of Ich, which we're just about to enter. The Tresena of Ich, the wind. Well, as you can imagine, the wind is going to bring some turbulence. This turbulence, this breath, this is what brings life. Everything needs to change. We need to change things around. We need to sweep things clean from time to time. And this is exactly what Ich does as it comes in. It's all about communication. It's about new communication, maybe new methods of communication, new ways of communicating, but also about new words that might come out of it. Ich, the breath of life, well, when we see the wind change direction, particularly here in Guatemala, we move from dry season into rainy season. We move from rainy season into dry season. We move from the living, growing season into the dry harvest season. So we see this very, very prominently here in Guatemala. And of course, when we ourselves, when we breathe, we're alive. When we stop breathing, we're not alive anymore. So you can see how the breath of life is so important to us. But when we see what happens, it's all about change. And, you know, us humans, we don't always like change. Sometimes we like things just the way they are. Thank you very much. We like the status quo. We don't like the apple cart upset. Well, Ich tends to do that with its words, sometimes with its actions, with its way of being. Ich is coming in to sweep in the new, to bring new things in. And in this way, the old things have got to give way. So they might be old directions. Sometimes where we are, we're walking along our path, we think everything's going really well, and then all of a sudden a new wind comes in and blows, off, blows us off, off course, as we might see it. But it's not really, of course, it's just a change in direction which needed to happen at that point in time. So, one of the things that Ich can bring is anger. And I think that most of this anger comes from a resistance to change. So as you go through this Tresena, realize that this change is going to happen whether you like it or not. You can't resist the wind. So, like, you've got to be kind of like, you can stay stable, you don't have to be blown around like a little leaf in the wind. But what you can do is allow yourself to change direction gracefully. You can stay rooted whilst moving in a different direction. Learn to be the willow rather than the reed. And certainly don't be the oak. Don't try and resist it, otherwise you might get snapped by it. So these are the potentials that I can see coming in. Now, as you can imagine, the change that can occur during this Tresena, the transformations that occur, can be quite large. But in addition to that, we've also got some astronomical and calendrical events which are going to happen in the middle of this Tresena, which are going to embellish that even further. The first one that I'd like to mention, well, you might see it as coming from a different tradition, but actually it's a really important part of any solar calendar. And that is what I'm going to call astrono astronomical Samhain. Now, Samhain, as many of you might understand or know, is Celtic Fire Festival. The Celtic Fire Festival, which marks a turning point of the seasons. It is the first day of winter, according to that particular calendar. Now, we usually celebrate it on the 31st of, De of October going into the 1st of November as Halloween, All Souls Day, All Saints Day, whatever, those kind of things. But astronomically, it's actually a bit different. And it occurs around about the 6th or 7th of November. The reason for this is that it's the midpoint between the autumn equinox and the winter solstice. It's the exact midpoint between those two. Now, if we take, it, take the premise of that at Samhain is when the portals to the other world are open, then we see that on the day 5 Kame, the 6th of November, this is when the portals open. So we can expect this to be a quite transformative period, a quite energetic period. So we go through that. Then the next day is six Kech. Six Kech is the return of the Year Lord. The Year Lord six Kech came in on 20th of February and he's gone through this rising phase throughout the year, which peaked in the middle of June. And now He's gone back, and this is a second apparition because we have a 365-day solar calendar where Kech begins each month, 
imposing or imposed onto a 260 day calendar and so he's going to come around twice so this is when he begins his second period which is well 105 days long let's say and this is seen as the dry period the end of the the end of the line and so it's kind of like he's going back he's simmering down a bit now kech has been a strong year lord it's kicked things around a little bit and so this could be a softening time in addition to that on the same day we also have the new moon so that's kind of an interesting energetic period as i say we then have the return of venus as a morning star according to the dresden codex now venus has already started to get into its position as a morning star but right now it's lost in the glare of the sunrise by seven anil by the 8th of November, we will be able to see Venus clearly rising as the morning star just before sunrise. So this is a very important time as well. This is kind of like the return of the light. This is where we've done with the old um, period of uh, around about 268 days or so of the dark mirror in the west. And here we are going back into the light again. So we can really see this whole thing the portals open then we have kind of like the death of the old king and then we have the return to the light so as i said this could be certainly a time to be hanging on to our hats as it were but i think it's all going to get a heck of a lot easier later on during the tracena so we're going to start the tracena with one ich we have one which is novelty we have ich which is changes which is communication so this is a great day to start communicating something new to bring a new topic out those kind of things but also to breathe new life into something to put a new breath into something so this can be a great beginning where you want to put your word into something maybe even to publicize something we're then followed by two akabal now again this could seem like a really good beginning like we can see two things coming together now akabal is already this bridge between the light and the dark it's the twilight it's that moment just before the dawn so we already have this kind of like a duality in one place through akabal and then we see two which is a duality as well so it really is this kind of like bridging of two things to bring them together to form a new concept so it's a great time to get new things out possibly by bringing something that you've been hiding in the darkness as it were it's time to bring it out into the light okay we then move into three cat now you know that three days for me are very much internal days they're very much about being in the home they're very much about being in your heart those kind of things and here we see cat so cat is the nawal of the net it's all about capturing abundance it's all about liberty it's the the net where it very much depends on whether you're inside or outside of the net. If you're the fisherman, it's abundance. If you're the fish, it's ensnarement. So this might be about looking within yourself to see what to release. This might be looking inside yourself to find the abundance, looking within your home to find the abundance, rather than going and looking around the outside world for it. Okay, also looking inside yourself to cut any ties any bonds that don't serve you anymore, anything that's holding you back, any attachments which are coming from within. This is a good day to be looking at them, analyzing them and working out whether they help you to change, whether they help you to transform or whether it's time to change them, whether it's time for that wind to blow through them and bring you the liberty from the attachments that you need in order to move forward. On Monday, we go into four can so can the power and the wisdom and the number four representing this very very grounded down to earth stability so this is kind of like earthly wisdom it's a day on which we're kind of looking at power but from a very very stable kind of like earthy way this can also be you know can is this wisdom which might come from other places can represents the body lightning flowing through each one of us it's the you know the key the chi these kind of things that help us to and for want of better words work with our magic now the four is all about bringing that down to earth you know some of this wisdom can be very enlightening but the whole point is to use it in the physical world to actually make use of it for, for some kind of 
better purpose, to make life easier or something. So this is very much about grounding your wisdom into the real world. That's what 4 can can do. Makes it tangible. We then move into the 5 Kame day. Now, as I said, this can be seen as a portal to the other world because it's the astronomical Samhain. But 5 Kame, well, Kame is all about spiritual transformation. It's about the ancestors. It's about working with that other world, with the world of the dead in one way or another, which, let's face it, Samhain has certainly got a lot of uh, um, meaning around. And we see the number 5, the one hand representing work. So this is really about working on your transformation, working with the spirit of the ancestors and with the portals open or the veil thinned on that day, we can imagine it to be a really powerful day for doing any kind of transformative work. Now, there may be some fear around that because Kame is all about facing our fears as well. But this would suggest that you're going to have to put some energy into it because work is the application of energy in order to get something out of it. So it may not be the necessarily the easiest of days, but it should be pretty rewarding in the end. We then move into six Kher. Well, we we're all hoping that six Kech was going to bring strength and stability. The six bring that stability from the upper world and the lower world into this world. And Kech bring that strong um, influence from the wilderness to come in. So it has that possibility. It has the possibility for the balance. The six is a very balanced number. It's a very stable number. It's generally kind of like on the, um, on the softer side of things, as it were. So it can be a very interesting day. This is a great day to get out into the wilderness, to get out into the trees, to go out into nature and use that to bring stability, possibly to help stabilize your family. So if there's any friction going on in the family, then six kech is a great day to get out either as one or as the whole family and kind of get an understanding of how to balance that energy, how to bring it back to stability. We then move into seven anil. Anil being the ripening. Anil being the golden light. And the number seven representing endings, representing the top of the pyramid. It's like the end of the ripening process. So when you see seven anil and the return of the morning star, bringing the illumination, bringing the sun up into the world, after this period of going through the dark mirror and then all of that kind of thing, you can understand that Seven Ganil might be a really, really good day for that. It's like, finally, we've emerged out into the light. The ripeness is taking us and we, you know, well, we could see ourselves as being bask, basking in golden light on that day, which would be a real nice thing. But let's just say that it looks like a rather joyful day, a day of celebration, a day when we can look at everything that we've um, received from the harvest. You know, it's like bringing the harvest to a culmination, bringing uh, the maturity, bringing the ripening process to an end. And that when we've been putting all of our energy into our work, we've been putting all of our energy into figuratively growing our corn for the last nine months, then all of a sudden, right here it is, the harvest is in, the harvest is over, the maturing is done, now we can celebrate that. And again, this is a kind of like, this would be a great day for a harvest festival to celebrate the abundance and you know the joy that comes from bringing in the harvest. As I've often said, and I like the play in between the Nawalis and what we see is Anil, where we receive the abundance, followed by Toch, where we make our ceremony. And here we have Eight Toch. Eight Toch being literally the day of celebration of ceremony, the day of the celebration of the sacred fire. Toch represents our ability to give back. It represents our payment. It represents our service. And a lot of the time here, we're doing that through the sacred fire. We're paying with our candles, we're paying with the cigars, we're paying with all of the offerings that we make for the sacred fire. We're paying on behalf of our community, we're paying on behalf of our family, and on behalf of ourselves. Now, that's the way that it's done here, and it's done with the fire, and this is where it's about. But we can also make payments in other ways. So this is a great day to be serving in one way or another, looking after your community, looking after people, looking after yourself, looking after whatever it is around, making sure we give that payment, making sure we take time 
Our energy is a payment. Our life force and our time are probably one of the greatest, for, uh, greatest payments that we can ever give. So when we make that little sacrifice, we spend a little time in our community being of service. We spend a little time just lighting a candle and giving thanks for our health. And that's what keeps everything nicely in balance. We then move into 9Z, Belahat Z. Now this again is a very, very important day. This is all about faith and loyalty. Z is all about justice, faith, loyalty, and unconditional love. Z can be a really, really important day to understand how it is to have faith in stuff, to understand guidance. And here we have it connected with the number nine. So the number nine represents the number of lunar cycles that we spend within the wombs of our mothers. And therefore it represents life. It also represents the divine feminine. So when we see those two things put together in that way, this is faith in the feminine. This is guidance from the feminine. This is a day to celebrate the women who guide us in our life. This is a day to ask for their advice. If we're a little bit lost, if we're not sure where we're going, if we're not sure where the wind has been taking us, maybe it's the women in our life that we need to consult on this day. We can ask them for a bit of guidance on that. It's also about guidance within life itself. So maybe your own guides are speaking to you strongly on this day and having faith in it. Having faith in that guidance around us. Okay. Moving on from that, we go into 10 bats. Now this is a beautiful day. We have bats, the creativity, the beauty that we bring to the world, our art. It's the way that I see it is that we're each a part of the divine, maybe with the hands. And with the hands that work through us, we have the ability to bring beauty to the world whatever art form we choose. Now, some of us write, or we might sing, or we might play musical instruments. We may, might build stuff. We might create patterns out of plants. It doesn't matter. We've all got our creative part to us. And here, that creativity is coupled with the number 10, which represents community. So we have those two things coming together. So this is a great day to go out and collaborate Make music with your friends. Make art with your friends, with your community. Bring that beauty to the world as a group. Because it's really, really strongly um, signified on this day. This is about creating stuff together. Making the world a more beautiful place with the people around you. Cooperating and collaborating. It's a really nice day for doing that. We then move into 11 Ech. Now... 11 Ech can be a very, very interesting day as well. There are certain ways that I can see things, and Ech is all about often the journey. It's about the journey of discovery, and it's all about learning about stuff. This might be a physical journey that takes us in a direction. It might be a relationship journey. It can be anything. It's all about discovering the way that something reacts when something else happens. Now, this can bring us many paths. There are many choices, many opportunities. There's quite, as I said, this is already the center of change. And we have Ech here with the number 11. Now the number 11 can be a bit hectic at times. The number 11 can be incredibly creative, but often goes in many different directions in order to bring that creation out. And as such, it doesn't always know exactly why it is where it is. It just knows that it needs to be there. So when we add this to the journey, Noel, we can imagine that we might be walking a path with absolutely no idea why we're walking it, just the absolute certainty that we need to be walking it in that direction at a particular time. We might get a sudden urge that we need to go somewhere. We might need to just literally drop everything and take a journey somewhere. Now that can be the 11 Ech energy, but when that urge is received, I think it's kind of important to listen to it. So for 11 Ech, I would suggest not making too many fixed plans because you don't know until the day exactly where it is that you might need to go. And so 
that might lead to you having to cancel plans or something like that because there'll be a sudden call that you've got to go in that direction. And I think we should heed those kind of calls because that's where our learning lies and there's possibly something that we even don't recognise at the time that's in that direction that we need to bring back into our lives. After 11 Ech, we're then going to bring it all together in 12 Ach. Now 12 Ach, where we have Ach, the harmony of the home, the harmony of the community, that strength, that bravery, that backbone of the community with one of the highest of the numbers, with the high and even number of 12. This is all about bringing together all of your life experience in order to bring harmony in the home. Maybe that's why you had to go on that journey for 11 Ech, because you needed to go and bring that in order to bundle into the next day. Now, 12 Ach, we can kind of imagine as like all these changes that we've been through during the Iktra Senna, well, 12 Ach is kind of like the one finally bringing stability. It's the one bringing the backbone, bringing the strength and bringing the harmony, using all of its life experience. If we imagine, well, okay, I often talk about Kawok being the captain of the ship, but here we have Ach in charge. And he's kind of like using all of his experience, all of his knowledge. And I use he because Ach means he of. It's a very masculine Nawal. But he's using all of that knowledge and experience in order to bring harmony. So you may find that maybe there's a situation that confronts you on 12 Ach, we're still in the Iktra Center after all, and that your resources, your previous knowledge and experience are drawn upon in order to bring harmony, in order to be a pillar of the community. You need to look back at what you've learned before and employ that in your harmony. Finally, we end up on 13 Ish. Now 13 Ish is a very powerful day. We have Ish, the representative of Mother Earth, our connection to Mother Earth, and also the shrines and altars, the sacred places around the world, and the number 13 representing the ancestors and the spirit world. So this is kind of like the ancestors' shrines. So this is a great day to go visit ancestral shrines. This is a great day to finish that Iktra Sena by making some offerings to Mother Earth. It's going to be a very, very powerful day for ceremony. Um, you probably really want to know what you're doing on that day because it is a very, very strong thing with the number 13 there. But it's a great day to honour your ancestors at whatever altar, at the old shrines, at the shrines of the old world. This is a great day for that. Additionally, it's a very strong day to be connecting with Mother Earth, connecting with the spirit of Mother Earth. It's a great day to make your offerings, to give thanks to Mother Earth for everything that you've received from her. Also, to look at how you can help Mother Earth, how you can work with her more closely. So like maybe the spirit world is going to tell you that on this day. And the other thing, of course, is that it's a great day to make your prayers, to ask Mother Earth for what you might need in your life as we finish the Iktra Sena. So, I hope you've enjoyed that. And I'll see you again in a couple of weeks.